Okay, uh, we're back again here at allpointstv.com. And uh, we're here on, on uh, the first of the year. And I uh, hope you all survived the, um, uh, well, you did survive it. You're here, you're here today, so you did survive it. <clears throat> I was wondering last night if I was going to survive all the shooting out there. It was, I can always tell, I was telling John, <clears throat> I can always tell how uh, bad the year was by how much shooting goes on. And I don't think what they're doing is shooting in the bring in the new year. I think we're doing the shooting the old year out. And boy, there was a lot of shooting in my neighborhood last night. That shooting didn't stop until one o'clock. And some of those people out there were shooting and selling their machine gun. <laughs> I don't, I, what kind of gun would that be where they are? It's just pumping one after another. I thought somebody was trying to break in my house. It could be just a semi-automatic. Some people, if you know how to pull it fast enough, the trigger you you can go off like it's like an automatic. And some people do have fully automatic weapons. Is, is some, it like a pump? What are they doing? Is it a pump gun or what? It's like basically it's as fast as you pull the trigger. You put a, a magazine in and you pull it, and then you like rack it back and you pull the trigger, and the blowback action causes the spent shell to be uh, kicked out, and the new one uh, chamber, a new ro another round chambered, and you pull the trigger. It goes rapidly. Bang, 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 bang. You oh. can pull as fast as you can pull the trigger. You can uh, go better get a bang. Is that, is that automatic or semi-automatic? That's semi-automatic. See, semi full auto, full auto. Would you you pull the trigger and go, and it'll go right into unless you break it by you know stuff. Oh, pull okay. it back on the. On yeah, the see, I'm not a, I'm not a, uh, I'm, I believe in the Second Amendment, but I don't, I don't, I don't I'm not a, a gun uh, maestro. But that guy that was out there shooting last night, he must have been, really had a bad year. <laughs> he was out there. I said, well, this guy and my dogs in the house barking. I couldn't quiet him down. And uh, the same like somebody trying to knock the front door in. That that gun was loud. Uh, I hope he didn't. I hope I hope he, this guy was uh, had a, have a better year. <laughs> I hope you have a better year out there in 2024. And uh, maybe you can, because uh, I, I think that shooting last night was kind of like it wasn't welcoming 2024 in here. It was shooting 2023 out. If you look at the price of ammo, if somebody had a lot of rounds to expend, uh, they probably had a pretty good year. But a lot of people probably <laughs> doing by um. Should we say um, they don't have jobs where they actually report their earnings to the IRS? <laughs> okay, so yeah, yeah. Get, well, they, look, keep your powder dry because there's so much going on right now. You might need you might you might need that ammo, and uh, I, I don't I I uh, I think we have to uh, be aware of the times, and these are some very troubling times right now. Uh, today, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the um, the number one story. You already guessed what that would be, the number one story in 2023. There were a number of stories, but there's only one that stands out among all the others. And that is uh, this unprecedented, and I mean this is unprecedented, to have a uh, former president <clears throat> brought to trial. And I don't mean just, <clears throat> just a single um, trial, just repeated charges being made, <clears throat> even uh, even the charge of the president having inappropriately um, handled or had possession of classified national, sec national security information, which is really stretching it because the president is the one that classifies and determines what's classified information. Who else would be the one that would determine that? Certainly would be the courts. And how do you get um, classified information agreed to by the Congress and have to go through what, 535 members? And they have to, <laughs> how would it be classified if you have 535 members putting their hands on it? And you couldn't tell what it, what a leak it would, would be. And it certainly would not remain uh, uh, secure with that many persons having knowledge of it. So the only person that can actually classify uh, and um, you know, national security information has to come through the president. And the president can't be about the business of um, sharing it with everybody that's in his uh, administration. I mean, it's a need to know type of uh, thing. But the CEO of the executive branch, the single office holder there, 
And you ought to read some of the uh, discussion that went on at the Constitution Convention in 1787 about that as they were discussing how they're going to set up the uh, executive branch of government. And they kept looking at their chair. I think they kept, I, I can tell by looking at, um, at James Madison's notes <clears throat> that when it came to that, that part about setting up the executive branch of government, I could almost see them in my mind's eye, uh, turning their face toward the person sitting in that chair <clears throat> that had gone there to, to Philadelphia, not to sit there as a delegate, but as an interested person that giving, that's giving some credibility to it. And that's the great, the greatest president this country has produced and there are none closest to him. And that's a great George Washington who did what the other 45, we've had 46 um, <clears throat> presidents elected, but Grover Cleveland was elected twice in nine consecutive terms in 18, 84 and 1892, and we're going to see that again, I do believe, in uh, this year where we have a non-consecutive uh, election of a president. I think that that person will be uh, Donald Trump, but I don't think we need to uh, ride, ride on that possibility and, 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 and lay down and not pay attention. We've got to pay attention to what's going on because they really do not want this man back in that White House. <clears throat> And somebody always asks this question, what do they what do they have to fear? It's not what Roosevelt said, what your only thing you have to fear is fear itself. They got something else to fear. <clears throat> and what they have to fear is someone going in that swamp that's not one of the swamp dwellers and ferreting out all the swampy things that have been going on behind the American people's back. And that is uh, if 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 they are true to what they say they're going to do, that needs to be done and needs to be done in this upcoming election, November the fifth. You know, time is running out, and there's not a lot that can that you can do once people begin to recognize where what holes they need to plug up and a lot of it is already plugged up <clears throat> and the remaining holes that are open to penetration into that minefield that they have created in washington washington's a cesspool a crime a crime syndicate <clears throat> this is a crime syndicate Washington is, um, uh, and one guy said it in the video, and I was surprised that, th that this that this came across the airways, and <clears throat> Zuckerberg did allowed it uh, to come through that network they have. Google, you have one too. <clears throat> but this guy said um, that uh, America is the most corrupt country in the world. And that's strange to hear that because, you know, we always are promoting the, the, the view, you know, pushing forward the proposition that the, uh, the demons are elsewhere. Not here, not in the United States of America. And people keep saying, and it can happen here. And that just shows me the extent of the cover-up because it's been happening here. And it's, and sometimes it's only happening here. <clears throat> How many countries do you know about have had multiple leaders assassinated? We've had four in this country. How many have uh, had the, the national leader elected <clears throat> and not allowed to take office?
and I have, uh, and 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 we count the number of presidents that have been assassinated, and the ones who won and then were not allowed to take office, and the ones who were in the office and were taken out of office by inappropriate means. I've counted ten of those. Each of those assassinations were coups. Even if there's no conspiracy, it amounts to a coup because you overthrew the elected government that the whole people bought into and elected. And therefore, when you take the president out, you've actually taken out a whole government. You've taken out the people's, uh, the, 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 the administration that is the political embodiment of the whole people of, of the United States. And the reason for that is because only the president, only the president of the United States is the, is the office holder <clears throat> that all the voters vote for, all the voters that can vote and, and decide to vote, vote for. There's no other office like it. And so this is, um, what is happening right now is a top issue that took place in 2023, and that is to bring in a former president to court. And I listened to these commentators, and I listened to Mark Levine, <clears throat> which I think you taped this program before last night. These guys don't come in on on uh, on the, on the holidays, Thanksgiving. You can you can believe they're gone uh, for at least that Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you know, Thanksgiving being on Thursday, so that it would be the day before Thanksgiving and the day after Thanksgiving and the weekend, of course, they wouldn't be um, <clears throat> doing live uh, feeds anyway. But during the Christmas and the New Year holiday season, Merry Christmas and season and the rest of the holiday during that time period. <clears throat> I don't know what it, what that is. All, all of them, all of them take, all of the major players, all the major hosts, at least on the two stations I watch, I watch, well, I'm, it's really down to one now. I, I'm pretty much watching Newsmax. <clears throat> but um, there are a couple of programs I tune in on, um, on on Fox, only because I want to hear what, what Mark Levine is going to say, since he sometimes gets into the uh, Constitution, but he doesn't know a lot about it. And last night was an example, another example of that. We um, um, the, the energy and the stands he has taken are beneficial to the country. But I notice when they start to talk, and that's also true of a David um, Hanson is his name. When they, when they start talking about the uh, what the Constitution requires, I notice they stop talking about the Constitution and get off that real quick and start going into something else. It's a, um, like, for example, uh, David uh, Hanson said that um, they don't have the authority to decapitate. Use the word decapitate, cut the head off of the government. Well, or, or they may say this. They might say this is the argument between this miscreant that is acting on on behalf of uh, Merrick Garland, and that is um, uh, Smith. This guy is terrible, and he cares nothing about the rule of law. But they're arguing right now whether or not 
the president has absolute immunity or is just partial immunity. <laughs> this is this is really some real insanity here. In the Clinton administration, well, after they left office, remember they absconded with um, you know, stuff from the White House, hundreds yeah. and hundreds of thousands of dollars of the stuff. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that's certainly something they should have known that it wasn't. They didn't bring it in there, but they didn't go after them as vehemently as they were doing for this paperwork. That's right. And like I said, like you already <clears throat> stated, the president's the one that has the ability to say designate what's you know the class of the classification without, gets without any doubt, John. So I mean, this is like it just goes to show you they make it up as they go along. Yeah, they do. They, they do. Uh, I, that's a point. I, I want to make a point about that later on in the program because something has happened very critical in this country we got to be to pay attention to. And I'll, I'll, I'll make mention of that in a, in a few minutes. But this is some dangerous waters that we are in right now. And the country can easily be drowned um, in what is taking place because when we've had some challenges to the Constitution before, we have never had what we have now, which is a total dismissal of the document. Now we've had some dismissals of the document. Don't 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 doubt that. But this is this when you when you start going after the president of the United States after he leaves office. The only thing that is probably more serious than that, the only thing that could be more serious than that, which we didn't have this, in, as they say that they do, that the, the books are wrong about about that. A civil war would be would be worse, where the pe where the people in the country are pushed up against each other and they are fighting each other over political power, and they actually picked up arms to determine which of the factions, let's call it what it is called in Federalist Paper 10, Federalist Paper 9 and 10, Federalist Paper 9, Alexander Hamilton, 10, J John James Madison. <clears throat> These factions go to war with each other over power within the polity. That's not what's going on. That's not, that's why it's, that, that they're incorrect in naming that a civil war. That's not what this is about. This is not a civil war. This is a war over independence, but not the independence of the 13 co colonists, all of them, or at this point, uh, 22 and 11, 33 states at that time, at the time of what they call the Civil War in 1861 to 1865, <clears throat> there were, um, 22 and 11, that's 33. And then of course, West Virginia illegally was carved out of Virginia and became West Virginia. And that is unconstitutional. I've done that as well, carving a state out of another state. But that's what we're talking about. We're talking about things going on that are unconstitutional. And the point I want, want to make about that is that what is happening in this country and the reason why we've not been able to understand how off we are and how this country has been doing things that are illegal is that it's made things that are illegal, it, it's acted as if those things that are e illegal, that they politically declare to be legal, they are acting as if those things they, they declare to be legal, they are therefore constitutional. Uh, that's the point that is being made. <clears throat> Kevin Guzman did <clears throat> JD and has a PhD. <clears throat> and that's the point he's making when he says that um, modern constitutional law, and he put constitutional law in quotation marks, modern constitutional law has almost nothing to do with the constitution and he's right what the what they've done in washington is that they have 
legitimated uh, leg le legitimized the legal and then acted upon it as if that then makes it constitutional. But that which is legal does not amend the constitution, does it? Doesn't article five give us an amendment process to which you can amend the constitution through different four different processes? <clears throat> so what you pass in terms of law does not amend the constitution, but the law is what Alcee Hasten said, and that is the law is what they say it is. And they're saying a lot of things right now that are unconscionably being said. And they're arguing now over whether, <laughs> over whether or not the president of the United States has partial immunity or absolute immunity. And let me tell you what the answer is. <laughs> You scholars listen very carefully. There is no immunity. What you have here is, an, is, a, is a procedure. And if the procedure is not followed, it's not that the immunity then kicks in. What kicks in is a separation of powers. That's that's the that's the immunity. It's an immunity on, in the sense that it's a hedge around the three branches, through which there's a corridor of power here, a corridor of power there, and a third corridor of power. And each one is not to be breached and taken over by the other other two because of the check and balance system and the separation of powers therein where the powers are separate from each other so that the branches of government can hold each branch of where well, each branch of government can hold the branches of the government accountable accountable to who accountable to the to the states and to the people therein that's what amendment nine and, and amendment ten are, are, are saying so this idea that there is partial immunity and absolute immunity, I'm going to argue with you about that, and you're not going to argue back because you don't have anything to argue with, because the Constitution does not allow e e does not allow either of those. But what the Constitution does do is that it sets up a procedure through which a a office holder, and that would be the president and the vice president and all civil officers of the United States, all civil officers of the United States. It names them in Article 2, Section 4. And it does so to show which of them can be held to account under the umbrella that is set up by the Constitution to hold them to account that must be used given the separation of powers you have to therefore go through a procedure if you're going to violate that hedge around each of the three branches of government. You can you can penetrate them, but only through going through the constitutional procedure. And I have on my side here George Washington, and it can't be any better than that. I see what you're saying. You better listen to what I'm saying. Some of you are listening to what I'm saying because I, I see I see what you're saying on on TV as you as you come you come back a little bit from what you you don't know, come out and say I was I made a mistake. <clears throat> what you do is you start saying something something very different, <clears throat> and I do see uh, some comments that are being made on these national programs, and. Uh, I can't prove any of this, but I but I do see a little bit of what I'm saying on this on the air uh, being said. It wasn't said before, being said now. But you better start listening to what I'm saying here. That's all of you. 
because I've been listening listen to what you've been saying. And I got to tell you something. You know, that's this is not that's not it. <clears throat> so you can run that by the layman. You can't run that by me. When you start saying things like was said last night, you got uh, where they had they were doing programs. You know, they don't come in. They don't come in. What they do is they pre-tape, and then they put up there some programs they've done before and do segments of the programs before and run that as a last of the year type of um, re reminiscing of what the program is covered. Victor David Henson, that's his name. And they had Victor David Henson on there. And they had Miller, Stephen Miller. They were, those were two pretty, pretty good segments. <clears throat> and Mark Levine was asking uh, them if uh, such and such a thing had risen to the level of impeachment. See, these are these are these are absurdities. Those statements are, are absurd. There is no standard. for impeachment. Do you, do you scholars agree with that? If you disagree with it, show it, show it to me in the Constitution. And don't be jumping around trying to confuse the public. I don't get confused. <clears throat> so don't be jumping around from Article 1 to Article 2 Stay in Article One where the impeachment process is uh, is spelled out and show it to me there. Don't go in there jumping into Article Two. <clears throat> the difference between the two, I mean Article One and Article Two, is that Article One lays out the procedure for impeachment. Article Two sets up the terms for the impeachment process to be, be to be used for the removal of the office holder, specific, specific to the president, the vice president, and those the president appoints with the approval of the Senate. Those are the civil office holders. You see, it goes back through the president because the president is the custodian of the American people and therefore the custodian of the country. Why isn't that seen as checks, checks and balances? <clears throat> okay, so now we got this claim on the table, never been raised before with a president we are, we are in unprecedented territory right now. We are in deep water. What's that song? Clear water runs deep, something like that. True waters, true waters run deep. Something, something along that line. Well, this, these, 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 we're in deep waters right now. To bring a still water, still waters run deep. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, still yeah. water. That's right. Still waters run run deep, and that is uh, it is amazing that this is going on. Am I am, am I am I really amazed by it? Let's see. Is that can I say that I'm amazed by it or just surprised that they would go that far? When I look at Washington, I really can't be amazed by too much because Washington, D.C. has done to the Constitution what Nancy Pelosi did to uh, Donald Trump's speech. 
that impertinence of her taking a speech in front of all of the people and because it's on television in front of the whole world, taking a speech and tearing it up after the president has spoken, that kind of disrespect. It was a slap in the face of the American people. We put that, we put, we put Donald Trump there. And whether you like it or not, you didn't like it, but you didn't have anything in, in the in the bullpen to bring out to stop it from becoming a fait accompli. And that's why he took office on the 21st of January, 2021. I'm, I'm sorry, 27, 2017, but did not take office January the 20th, 2021. All they were saying that if he gets back in there this year, he uh, will, will not leave because they want to make this man into a dictator. The man has already, the man has already stood down <clears throat> in an election that he won, he stood down. And you're telling me that if he loses uh, in a um, fair and square election in 20, um, 25, 20, in 2024, if he, if he loses, he, if he, if he wins, that he will not stand down in the future. So you got a crystal ball that can determine that. But the only thing that can determine it is how has he acted in the past? And, he, and in, the, in the past, although he asserted that he had not lost the election, he still stood down on the 20th. Well, actually, um, if you want to know about it, if I recall, the person who talked more about having a third term and desiring a third term was Barack Obama. <laughs> well, he's not that third term now with the Jolene Joe in office. He's the, he's the, he's the man who's got his hand up to Joe's butt, you know, running the, running the country. Yeah. You know? All right, and that's something, John. They keep talking about a third term. They have no problem. <laughs> The, the Democrats had no power or problem with uh, FDR having four terms, but uh, right, yeah, they, they, it's amazing that they they make these assertions of things that they do. That's one thing you can count on. That what they are, this is nothing but projection. Whatever they're pointing their fingers at, other person saying they're doing. Look back at those three fingers pointing back on that on the, you know on that 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 uh, thumb. Those three fingers pointing back. At the accuser, let's look, look. Let's go and look and see what they're doing. Donald Trump is a dictator. The man stood down. He didn't. He didn't think that he lost the election. And everybody would have to agree that if they had not had COVID, he would not have lost the election because all that mail and, and balloting, you could do anything behind behind those those uh, those walls. And we see the uh, the film. 2000 Mules and this uh, latest film that the, the Nash D'Souza came out with where he's talking about a police state. I didn't see the, I saw uh, glimpses of it. I didn't, I'm, it was, it only aired, I thought it was going to be, be aired over a period of time. It only aired two days and then they put it on, I think it's on Newsflix. So you know, it's like I think it's ironic though. For years, I've always heard the right wingers, the Republicans, always saying they they have no problem with the intelligence gathering apparatus, the law enforcement agencies. Oh, back to blue, back to blue, and now they're realizing it's there. The hired people will do whatever they're told to do, mm -hmm. and you don't necessarily enjoy a special relationship because you got a the black the, the black blue line thing on your bumper sticker. That doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be nice to you, okay? And I, I love it. I love it. That's one thing I always discuss discuss about the Republicans is they never, they always like laugh off or dismiss the abuse of power by the hands of authority figures. They always laugh that off. They thought it was ridiculous. Now they're dealing with it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that, that party has, 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 we had better put some backbone in that, in that party because they may go the, word, the way of the uh, Democratic Party because the Democratic Party pretty much is, is, is finished based upon these numbers. And if they don't uh, do what they did in 2020, which they this is look, you can't get let, let's let's stop um, uh, going down this 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 road with these lies. You can't win more votes than any presidential candidate in American history by not campaigning. Can we get, can we can we admit to that? 
rather than saying that you're conspiratorialist, you can't win an election by not campaigning. If that were the case, then Obama would have been able to ride into the White House in 2012 without campaigning because he won in a crusade he ran in 2008, but he campaigned in 2012. But then his numbers, look at his numbers in 2012 compared to 2008. His numbers fell off by 7 million votes. As popular as, as he was with those that were just so enamored over the fact that they were, that they were electing their first, as they, as they claim, I don't make this claim, they made the claim, their first Black American president. That would be problematical for me as a, as a historian <clears throat> because I am aware of Joel A. Rogers' work and I'm also aware of Alset Bakufu's work. And based upon their research, J. Rogers, Joel Rogers, having written a book called The Five Negro Presidents, and that's before Obama was, was uh, even thought of as a as running for president. And it's of course appealing to the single drop rule of quantifying who's black, and who's not black, which they which they turned that into a geographical question as well, because if you <clears throat> are black and you're around those pyramids, the time those pyramids are being built, then you're a dark skinned white. But the single drop rule is applied here in this country and <clears throat> and they were trying to find out what infinitesimal levels of of, um, of of black ancestry would it take for the person to be identified as black, something that Aristotle had dealt with back in ancient times in terms of what they call atavism, where you have, like you have in the uh, family of the uh, Dumas's, the Dumas family, Alexander Dumas married to Marie Dumas, Alexander Dumas called Alexander the Greatest. To distinguish him from Alexander the Great, they call him Alexander the Greatest, the Frenchman. And he married into Haiti. And that's where the Dumas family came from. That's the beginning of it. And so Marie DeMars and Alexander DeMars would have cre have would have fathered and mothered the DeMars that wrote this was Alexander DeMars Parade <clears throat> that would have written um, the Count of Monte Cristo, the Three Musketeers, and and those great works in French. French was the language of, um, was the literary language of, of Europe to write in, in French was, was, was premier. <clears throat> but Obama's numbers fell off. Here, here is a person claimed to be the first black president, the first one that, um, and who was not a, who could not have been a, a, a black president because he was a black president, then he's not eligible to run for the uh, presidency because his, because his his father was never an American citizen. Uh, I'm the one saying here. Nobody's challenged me on it. What I wrote today on Facebook, they won't challenge me on on what I said in that in that article uh, today either. which nobody else is saying, they're not gonna challenge me publicly. <clears throat> but that was a usurpation that occurred. But Obama's number fell off in 2012. He beat Romney, who couldn't beat Romney? I could have run against Romney. <clears throat> I mean, I, not that I would be running in, I don't, I, you never see me run. <laughs> you never see me joining, the, joining these people. But I, uh, I, I saw where Obama's number fell off by 7 million. Obama got 69.7 million votes in 2008. 
he got 62 million votes in 2012. He fell off by 7 million. Now you tell me how that, how does Donald Trump in 2020, who got 63 million votes in 2016 and got 75 million votes in 2020 and the same election get defeated by the man who didn't campaign and got more votes than any previous presidential contender running for that office. This man served under Obama as his vice president they never thought about elevating him up to the presidency because when Obama didn't run in 2016, they ran Hillary Clinton, who hopped over Joe Biden. That's a statement right there. He wasn't strong enough to run for the presidency as a vice president, stays out for a term and comes back and runs and wins in a by the largest vote total of any president in American uh, history. And we're not supposed to say anything about that. Not supposed to challenge that. And Obama did not have the numbers that Trump had. Trump had 75 million votes in the 2020 election and lost. Had 63 million votes. It, it really, uh, Hillary Clinton's popular vote, Trump, uh, Donald Trump's popular vote in 2016. But what Trump did was that he penetrated behind that blue wall. And when you saw him taking states that were blue states, that's when you knew early on, around 10 o'clock, this election was over. They didn't call it at that time, but this that election was over. You saw the people were looking. You you should go back and look at those that, at those uh, videos. They were horrified because they had predicted this is going to be a landslide election. Hillary Clinton is going to trounce this guy. She's going to win four electoral votes, and that didn't happen. And they did not have any contingency plans in place to stop him. I can tell you right now that if they had put contingency plans in the background to stop Donald Trump, they would have stopped him in 2016. They didn't have that. And what they were doing in the aftermath of this election now being unequivocally placed in Donald Trump's uh, uh, quarters, and they could not deny that. They had no way of, of finessing it because they had not in, put in plan and strategy to prevent it. They tried to. do. There was some... There was, there was some discussion going on in the background but they didn't have anything in place to prevent it, but they were discussing how what could be done and nothing could be done. And that's why early the next morning, uh, Donald Trump came and uh, apologized for keeping people waiting, keep, keep, keeping people waiting and saying that, um, if you remember, he said, uh, complicated business, folks, complicated business. The complicated business was she had not conceded and I think it's very interesting in 2020, Hillary Clinton was saying before the election, she said to Biden, she said, uh, listen to, to this part of what she said the night of the election, <clears throat> told Biden not to concede and that he would eventually prevail. And if you look at those, those numbers that were coming in, Donald Trump was killing it. Up until about 10 o'clock at night, people went to bed thinking that the outcome, though given those trends, that Donald Trump was going to be returned to the White House and woke the next, woke, if they stayed up to around two o'clock, they would have seen the numbers changing drastically. And I didn't believe the numbers. Donald Trump didn't believe the numbers. 
yet the man stepped down. And yet they're saying the man, if he gets in there again, he would he would be a dictator and would not step down ever again. And we never have any elections again, as if they've been holding free and, and fair elections in this country. So we, we're in we're in dangerous waters right now. And those persons that are asserting that the pre president has privilege, let me tell you something. So you won't go out there making making uh, these kinds of statements that embarrass you and embarrass the framers. The framers were too proficient in what they were doing to leave that kind of wiggle room open where an office holder could be elected and then just do whatever the office holder wanted to do. You know, if that, if that, look at how ridiculous that, that would be. If that could happen, you wouldn't even, what's the purpose of having the Constitution? If it, if it could be abrogated by a, by a single office holder, the CEO of the nation can abrogate it by simply de, 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 defiling it, by refusing to follow it and have no protocols in place to call the question. He has either partial immunity or absolute immunity. This shows me how they've gotten away with um, suspending the, the Constitution of the United States and have gotten away with the claim that this country, unlike all the others, uh, this is a country of law. What they've done is made that which they made lawful, they made it constitutional. There is no... Um, immunity of the president of the United States. Immunity from what? He can go into office and do what he wants to do, and they have no way of calling him on it. Well, what is the purpose of the Constitution then for? If the president can be above the document, that is not true, what they're saying. I know what you're saying. It flies everywhere in this country but here. There is no, there is no partial immunity or absolute immunity of the president. And I know where you got that from. You got that because you claim that George Washington asserted executive act, act executive, executive privilege. That's that's the claim that's being made that executive privilege goes back to the very first administration of the United States, George Washington administration, and he exerted executive privilege when the Congress wanted to overlook and look into the, the executive branch of government to see what had transpired in the construction of, of Jay's treaty. They wanted to know what was the what do they call it today? They call it um, the, the back when you have the back drafts going on. You know the, what, what's the the back the background talk that's going on to these public these dreams that are made public, but you don't know the uh, the the transmission of information back and forth that has, has been placed in the mix to bring about the decision that was made. And J John Jay, the first Chief Justice of the Supreme Court had signed a treaty, it's called Jay's Treaty of 1795. And there were people that were so upset with John Jay that they wanted to know what role, what was said in, in, the, in the background and they wanted to demand, they, they, didn't, they demanded the notes, the documents that was in the care of George Washington in the executive branch of government because that's where the negotiations would have, would have uh, carried out, been carried out. You'd have chaos if it was carried out otherwise. And so the president was 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 was, in, was involved in the process. He uh, 
he, he uh, signs treaties and the and and the uh, subject to the approval of, of of the Senate, and they demanded to see the the, the notes in that treaty that it, it that it, uh, that they had uh, agreed to. They wanted to see the notes now because they're now questioning where they're giving them information and so on and so forth. Here's what George Washington said. George Washington said he had privilege. George Washington told him this. There's a separation of powers. And if you want to get those notes, you must go through the procedure to do it. And the procedure is the impeachment process. If you if you impeach the president, what that does it allows the Congress to penetrate the hedge around the president of the United States. But without that, you can't do it. There is no there is no privilege. There is a procedure. Are you scholars agreeing with me on that? Not that it matters. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you agree or not. You need to you need to go back and read that document and study each part. Because that document is seamless. George Washington never asserted the executive privilege. The man was in the room where the Constitution was being dis discussed. <clears throat> and although he very seldom said anything, because he was not a delegate, so he very seldom said anything on the floor, but he's paying attention to everything that was going on. And Washington knew they could not do it. He knew there was a fence around each of the three branches of government. But he also knew that the frame was meant to have the rule of law to prevail, the Constitution to prevail, to be the law of the land. And therefore, what Washington was telling those that were pursuing documents out of the executive branch of government, he was saying you cannot handle those documents under the circumstances you're making the demand. You must go through the procedure to get those documents. And he, and he pointed them to the impeachment process. Well, that, was a, that would be a problem. Because here's the president of the United States elected unanimously by the states from which each of the members of the of the of the Congress are elected. Can you imagine that that they're gonna impeach George Washington? The man had in the first first election, the man had all six and nine electoral votes. All 13 states. I'm sorry. 10 states. Three of them Three of them were not, their, their votes were not assessed because in, um, in Massachusetts, for example, there were some problems with um, procedure and things of that sort. North Carolina, there was a problem. And, and, Delaware. So three states did not have their electoral votes counted, but all the ones were counted. There were no electoral votes against the great George Washington. George Washington received all 69 electoral votes. And then in the um, 
in the um, in the next election in 1892. Washington received all 163 electoral votes. There were 16 states at that time. And all 16 states had their electoral votes submitted. George Washington received every one of the electoral votes on two different occasions. The only president to do that, James Monroe came close to it. But there was one false elector and when I say false elect, I mean that you would, you, you would, you're supposed to, the, the system is set up for the electors to do their vote based upon the vote of the state. If the state votes for this candidate and not that candidate, then that candidate gets all the electoral votes, except in maybe, maybe uh, there, there, there's one state, maybe, maybe there are two, I know there's one, where they divide. What state is that? They would divide the electoral votes up based upon the numerical disposition of the voters, where a percentage, where a percentage is, that is how they divide the vote. But generally, the way it works is that, unless stated otherwise, in the states, all the electoral votes go supposedly to the person who won the, that state's uh, vote. Is you know, it's it's not. There's not any legal penalty if they don't do that, but that's the that's how it that's how it's set up to work. So if 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 they had imagine what would, would have happened if politicians who have to pay attention to the voters when it comes down to doing something that is so astounding that it brings up the invectives of the voters, it brings them out of the woodwork where they're all hollering and screaming and making a lot of noise about it. Think about how they would have played against, against the first president of the United States, the one that everybody in this country knew at that time that if George Washington was not there, this country would come unglued at the seams. That's the role this man played. This man was the glue of the nation. Could not have been put together without him. And George Washington told them that he had no right to withhold the documents on the certain procedural terms. He didn't claim executive privilege. He claimed the separation of powers. Now, they want to act like the president was set for executive privilege under George Washington. That's not true. Let me tell you where it started, the idea of executive privilege. You ready for this? It started under Dwight David Eisenhower. During the McCarthy period. Because Joseph McCarthy was, was figuring it out. He was, he was uh, the, the Paul Revere I don't know what I want to say, Paul Revere. That's that's like putting him up there with with with, with those people back in the revolutionary time of the country. But he was he, he was doing some of the things that that Paul Revere was 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 he was saying he was saying some of the things that Paul Revere was saying. Uh, smell the rat. And Dwight Eisenhower had communist in his administration. And Joseph McCarthy had ferreted that out and was calling them to testify before the, the Congress and Dwight Eisenhower asserted the the privilege at that at that point. Which you tried to act like because it was asserted legally, they tried to assert it was it was also constitutional by placing George Washington at the ham at the time when it was first asserted back in the time of those that were the, the founders and the writers and the drafters of the Constitution of the United States. And, that's, and that was something they made up. The reason why we get away with so much today that's, that's unconstitutional is because the, 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 the idea has become that that which has been made legal is constitutional. If, if what is made legal 
is not a part of the amendment to the Constitution, what's legal is not necessarily constitutional unless it vibes with that which is placed in the document. And I would even assert this. <clears throat> I know nobody's going to go along with me on this one. All you vaunted your use of um, um, Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, that's all everybody's clamoring about that right now. They want to use a, a Section 3 of the 14th Amendment against Donald Trump, saying he was involved in an insurrection. First of all, no insurrection occurred on, on the 6th of January. But you cannot assert that against the President of the United States anyway. Nor can you keep the president off the ballot as they tried to do in Colorado. They, that that's that, uh, and now Maine has joined them, and so on and so forth. Uh, that is going to be uh, struck down. But I don't know if anybody understands that you can't do that. You could even do it in terms of, of not allowing the Confederates to, to be elected to the uh, uh, to the uh, uh, Congress in the aftermath of the so-called Civil War, that was unconstitutional. And why is it unconstitutional? It's unconstitutional because every state is guaranteed in Article 4, Section 4. Guaranteed a Republican form of government. And in a Republican form of government, the people have the right to elect their representatives. And Section 3 abrogates that, and therefore that place in the Constitution is illegal. Because Article 4, Section 4, listen carefully, because Article 4, Section 4 is in the original document. Okay. We're in deep waters here, and we got to climb out of, we got to climb back, to, we got to oar ourselves back to shore. And we'll see if we're gonna, gonna do that. This is the year to do it. And I'll be writing about this in terms of my Facebook, writing about this because we've got to do it this year. We gotta be done. Okay. This was the most consequential thing that happened last year and we have to pay attention to it this year. Okay, next until next week, I want you to follow your dream. If you don't follow your dream, you'll never know what's on the other side of the rainbow.